In this episode of The Mind Pump, the so sewed. in this episode, we answer questions that are asked by listeners like you. They go and post them on our Instagram page. We pick our favorite ones, and then we answer them. But we also talk about current events and ourselves and studies. We do that part. We do um, all that stuff. In the first half of this episode. So here's what we talked about for the first 55 minutes of the show. We talked about our trip down to Santa Barbara. Uh, to see Bishop Barron. We just interviewed him for an upcoming episode, and we always have a great time down there. Shout out to Father Steve. Yeah, a bunch of buff priests. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, we talked about how Katrina had her first day back at work. Uh, that's a real tough one with the new baby at home. Adam's hoping she makes the transition uh, well or changes her mind, decides to stay home. Hmm. We talked about my beard. It's black now. That's right. I'm not a silver fox anymore. I'm just the fox. Yeah, black that's beard. It. Uh, Justin talked about how he lost power at his house because fuck you, PG&E. Yeah, and exactly. he killed the mother of all rats mm -hmm. that was eating all of their pumpkins. Congratulations, Justin. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put that one on my wall. Then we talked about masturbation. That's right. We had a whole segment where we talked about <laughs> masturbation. Great transition. And how it reduces your prostate cancer risk. Guys... You don't want to get prostate cancer. I encourage you. Push pause, go to Pornhub. There it is. Then I talked about how blue light from electronics is almost always bad for your eyes. I was when you're reading, watching porn, wear your glasses. <laughs> I was watching, reading studies about blue light and how it damages photoreceptor lenses in the eye. And those, excuse me, not lenses, but cells. And when those cells are damaged, they don't come back. So it's kind of crazy. So when you're on your computer, you should be wearing glasses for your computer that block a lot of the blue light. Now, our favorite company of blue light blocking glasses is Felix Gray. We like them because they're stylish and they don't change the color of everything you look at. Like you got those cheap ones that are orange or whatever. They're the best in the biz. Felix Gray, they're clear lenses, so they don't change anything, but they do protect your eyes from blue light. Um, and we got a hookup for you. If you go to Felix Gray Glasses, that's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get free shipping and free returns. Also, we have an announcement for everybody. New program, MAPS Power Lift. So this is a MAPS program specifically for people who want to improve the strength in their bench press, squat, and deadlift. People who want to compete. Um, and if you want to speed up your metabolism, this is good too. It takes you off of body image mm. and turns your focus to focus performance. Focus on the strength. We wrote this program with Ben Pollock, champion power lifter. We also have a discount for everybody because it is brand new. So you got to go to mapspowerlift.com, use the code POWER40, P-O-W-E-R-4-0, no space. Then we got in the fitness portion of this episode. Now, the first question, this person wants to know if we have any advice for people who are trying to put on muscle but are having a tough time with all the extra food. Next question, this person wants to know what to do when you stop putting on muscle. Like, what do you do? Do you, do you adjust your calories? Do you work with your workouts? The third question was, give up. this person learned in college that the eccentric part of a lift, that's the lowering part of the lift. So if I do a curl, I curl it up, and then I lower it, that's eccentric. They learned that that's the most important or the only important part of the lift. Uh, so what would happen if they just did eccentric lifting? Hmm. And the final question, if we could all train ourselves when we were 18 with the knowledge we have today, what would our workouts look like uh, to improve our performance in our respective Sports. I would be in the pros. Also, again, I want to make that announcement again. Maps Powerlift out right now on sale. Go to mapspowerlift.com. Use the code POWER40. That gives you $40 off. Also, you'll get a free T-shirt for the first people that get this program. So make sure you head over there and get yourself Maps Powerlift. Speaking of, uh, of of rock and roll. Not true. <laughs> I, was laughing, I was laughing earlier because I was uh, – when we went to go see Bishop Barron. Great time, by the way. Yeah. Love that guy. That was Love a him. party. Love that guy. Love his crew. His whole crew like his whole crew is fitter than we are. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it a little embarrassing. We yeah, it's a little I got a little insecure. Well, Father Steve, who's a is an actual priest. He's jacked. He's like yeah, yeah. he looks like he's got how old do you think he is? Forties, maybe early fifties, mid forties, something like that. Hmm. He had the short sleeve priest outfit. So yeah. <laughs> just veins. Yeah, because you know, like they can wear the Bulging long sleeve muscles. or the short. So he's got the collar, he's got yeah. the whole get up, and then he's got short sleeves. 
And he's got these little guns, dude, and he's just like, you know what I mean? He's pumped up with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I, <guess so. laughs> I mean, he's, oh. I'm like, that's so rad. Imagine if that was your priest, you know what I mean? So yeah. is Joseph, dude. Joseph well, is. Joe uh, Glore? Yeah. He's, yeah. well, he's on another he's level. Beast. Yeah, he competes, dude. Ex cover model. Yeah, dude, he's yeah. freaking Jack. Not your typical priest, right? No, well, I Joey's mean. not a priest, but but Father Steve is. Uh, uh, he's a priest. Yeah. What um, is what but, is Joe? Is, what's Joey's title then? He manages. I think Word he's on like fire stuff. Yeah, ma- yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. just works for the Word on Fire. Ah, thing. okay. He found Bishop Barron because he. I mean, he told us a story, right? He he did all the things that you, you know he thought he would do that would make him happy. Right, got jacked and. and was on the cover of magazines and was getting girls, obviously a good looking dude. And he just felt uh, empty and um, started looking for answers and found Bishop Barron's videos and it's super connected with him. And now he works for the word on fire team. Yeah. Uh, but what a great dude. What a great, tell me that place oh, doesn't a great group of guys. Tell me that place doesn't uh, make you feel different. Like when you walk through that, that the, yeah. the mission or whatever. Yeah. And you go through there. Mm-hmm. I was, anyway, I was laughing because I, when I asked uh, Bishop Barron if he liked heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, here it comes. I, mean, like, started, I like rock. Yeah, you, you like know? rock. You started naming all over. Okay. Like, yeah, not okay. so much the death metal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, all right, maybe I dabble with the darkness a little too much. I, don't know. Yeah, I, was like, I is don't it, like the metal. It's not, really, yeah. it's not real evil. It's just music. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I lift heavy when I listen to it. Is that bad? Yeah. Anyway. Well, yeah, it's the devil's tone. There's like in, in, in metal, there's like three different chord structures that like make it like dark and metal. Is that really? true? Yes. yes. Really? Yeah, look it up. Yeah. No way. That's yeah. funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, they use like, it's like this this one structure of chords that like uh, is commonly used in, in like a, a Slayer or like one of those kind of bands where they're just like all about the darkness. Mm, I think those, they're just full of shit. It's it's made up. Yeah. I mean, like, let's be honest. Yeah, they're it, full It's of just crap. fun. Yeah. yeah you you know don't mean? think they're possessed with the devil? No, dude. <laughs> No, no, they're just they're, they're 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 wearing costumes. Yeah, you think that's the devil that gave them them rock those skills no. with the guitar? I don't right. know, maybe, no, maybe the, the devil's busy doing everything else. You guys, with the government. Did you? you, know you what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's he's, right. He's real busy there. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's where he he's hangs out. us over, you know, worldwide. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Do you guys ever watch? Uh, uh, you remember the cartoon, the Powerpuff Girls? You remember that one back in the day when we were kids? <laughs> what? I mean, Justin knows. Yeah, I, 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 like unfortunately, you know. I know. And then, and then what was the other one? It was what Sailor is, Moon. Remember that no, one? I, no, oh. I don't go that far. Hey. You, I just outed myself. You jumped the shark right, right. there. <laughs> no. What is that? Fair what enough, is that? Dude. What are there you was, talking about? Hold on. There was Powerpuff Girls, and then there was the one, Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember I Dexter's too. Laboratory? Yeah. Anyway, it was a cartoon that was popular early 2000s, 90s, maybe early 2000s. And every time this like there was like this bad guy that popped out, and it looked like a devil, but it was like... He had like high heels on, and it was exactly what you'd think a devil would look like when it was a kid's cartoon. <laughs> yeah. This is the best depiction I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Can't believe you ever watched that. No, it's a cartoon? Yeah. Oh, no, Yeah, like this mad scientist makes these girls. Like huge eyes. When did it yeah. come on? I, you know what I do good it's with? almost anime. Take, kind of. take Powerpuff me. Girls. Look it up, Doug Show. Well, when when did it come on? Like what time in the day or what? Uh, the weekends? I, this is Cartoon Network. This was like later uh, on. I never really got it. So Cartoon Network came later for yeah. me. Yeah. Right. So I was done watching cartoons, but you you probably watch cartoons till you were twenty something. I love cartoons. Yeah. yeah look, look, there's I the I devil. Watch it with my kids. There's the devil for uh, for the Powerpuff Girls. Right Wait there. a second. Uh, this is like new cartoons, bro. It's not new, bro. Doug, could it, you? It, it's fairly new. Doug, could it's, you please uh, actually Google since we're he on here? Yeah, oh, when, 2008. Okay. When did Power Powerpuff Girls start? Yeah. You're about that. to get. It was. Outed. Two, You're it about was, to get outed. Right. It was right like now. early two thousands. Uh, bro, I'm I'm an adult in early two thousand. I don't give a shit. I'll watch it right now. Yeah. Put it on right now. Let's watch this fucking movie. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> what, Dexter's Lab was hilarious. 1998. Oh, someone else got clowned in here, and it wasn't me. Ooh. What? what you, you weren't an adult? In that? You, you were, were fucking 18, 18 you no, dork. No, I was 18. You were trying to say it was way later than that. <laughs> late, I, was, I said <laughs> no, late 90s, no, early 2000s. I was done you watching. clowned. I was done watching cartoons by high school, bro. Uh, Obviously, uh, you weren't. Listen, you were playing video games. <laughs> I love cartoons. I said late 90s, early 2000s. We, ha- we have it recorded. Yeah, so I was accurate. <laughs> yeah. You never watched. You never watched that. You never watched. Um, no, uh, Dexter's was, Lab. No, I was done watching. I was done watching cartoons by probably my seventh or eighth grade. So here's a at hack. the latest. Here's a hack. This is if you haven't tried this yet, text it out. Uh, test because it works. Cardio and cartoons. Best way to pass the time. Swear to God. Cardio and cartoons. When you're doing cardio, hmm. put cartoons on. Oh, that's the best one right there. Look at that, Dexter's Lab. Yeah. He was absolutely hilarious. Again, another cartoon that was started way later than you should be watching cartoons. With his sister, Dee Dee. Was... Dee Dee. Yeah. That's how he says her name. 
Anyway. I liked Pinky and the Brain better. That one was earlier. I never watched that one. No? No. Pinky and the Brain. Nah, 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 nah. No, no. Yeah. No, it doesn't ring any bells. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whatever. The, the, the best cartoons ever, though, which are extremely inappropriate today, are the original Tom and Jerry cartoons. Mm. Yeah. You, have you tried watching those with your kids? Oh, they're so violent. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you put them on with your kids and realized you had to change the channel? Yes. Because they're like smoking cigarettes. No, because my, my, uh, <laughs> my father-in-law, he'd like, they'd go over there, they'd watch them, and, and then I'd come in, and, and they're watching Tom and Jerry, and they're just ah! like smashing each other's faces and like like sawing arms off, and like, dude, it's crazy. How about when one, so of, them, violent. When one of them dresses up like a girl <laughs> to get the other one to like, ooh, you know, yeah, like checking her out or oh, whatever? yeah. That's usually Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Uh, oh, he does yeah, that Bugs too. Bugs Bunny is, was the, the original cross-dresser. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Anyway, Adam, didn't uh, did Katrina start work today? Is day day one? Today was, bro. Whew. How was that That's working? That's a hard out? transition. Yeah. It was a hard transition. Really? Yeah. Well, here's the funny part. So he's going through uh, what they call a sleep progression right now. So <laughs> sounds like a technical term for I guess doesn't want to sleep, bro. The, he's, <laughs> There's so, yeah, it. There's, yeah, no, totally. there's just there's all these terms now that I didn't exist when I was helping raise my little brother and sister. She's all in it, right? So she's reading on on everything that anything happens, like he, a sniffle happens, and she's like researching it right away. Which I'm I'm not making fun of her. I appreciate that. I love that my partner cares about our child. You know, I think that's yeah, that's, that's a good yeah, that's it's a important. Good, yeah, it's a good yeah, trait. Yeah, it's a good trait. I think right. <laughs> so this is not me clowning. about this happening. Yeah. So. Yeah. She's informing me that, you know, oh, no, I think we're going through a sleep regression. I'm like, what? What do you mean? She says, well, the last, like, four nights, um, he's randomly now waking up at, like, 3 o'clock. And then he's also wanting to uh, be fed, like, every hour again. And we had him on a really good routine, and he's been on this routine now for almost a month where we – uh, around 7.30 or so, we bathe him, she feeds him one last time, and then we put him down, and then he's down all night long, all mm. the way till like 5.30, 6 in the morning. So it, it's been really nice. I mean, we've been getting sleep and actually having a little bit of time for ourselves at night, but maybe just four days ago at best, maybe four or less, he started doing this where he's waking up now. And so she's talking to me about it uh, last night, and she's just like, oh, man, she goes, I really hope that uh, he sleeps through the night tomorrow night because tomorrow's her first day at work. And he didn't, you know, and this morning. So the, the, and today, like, so this was all new for me too. Like she's got to be up at work at like 530. So the plan was, okay, let's see if I can wake him up, feed him one last time, then give him back to you. She'll wake me up, give him to me so he can kind of fall back asleep and him and I can stay in bed till mm. probably like seven in the morning and then get up together. So that was the plan, and uh, that didn't go so well. I was, uh, I was, I think I was up at, I think she came in at like six or whatever. Or actually, no, I take that back. I woke up at six because I heard him, and I, I, I got up, and then she came out of the bathroom. She's like, "No, I haven't left yet. I, I'll get him." And so then I went and laid back down, and then she brought him to me, and I realized it was like already six thirty, and I'm like, "How come you're still here?" And she's just like, "Oh, you know, he didn't sleep well, and this and that, and." I can see like her having a really hard time like leaving. Of course. Uh, and I'm, you know, this this whole thing, like I, I've shared with you guys off air. I don't know how much of the podcast I've I've talked about. You know, I there's a there's a part of me now that doesn't really want her to work. You know, but I'm very careful about that because, again, it was this it was the thing that I fell in love with about her that she's independent, and she's got incredible work ethic, and she's talented and very successful, and so. You know, it's it's hard when you have somebody like that and that you're attracted to those qualities. And now that I see her with my son, I'm like, oh, shit, that trumps that, you know? And I didn't think that was possible. I would say that's a top five trait of hers that I fell in love with. And uh, I would have never thought mm -hmm. that that top five trait, now I would be like, I don't give a shit about that anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like now all of a sudden I could go from saying, which that selfishly for me, that's not fair, right? If that's something that still drives her and she's excited about. So I've been really like kind of, hands off with this whole thing of just not hand, not hands off not helping but hands off or not putting my two cents in on what i think or what i want Yeah, because i mean she's it's obviously at the end of the day it's up to her right to right her. and did you guys set this out or plan this out beforehand like okay was it discussed like you are you are going to work or not going to work or what's going to happen well you know two years ago you know mind pump was already starting to do well but we weren't in a place where 
you know, we live in the fucking Bay Area. So there's not very many people that can uh, live here and and not have both the husband and wife working. Oh, dude, you get you yeah. actually qualify in in the Bay Area for assistance for government assistance if you make uh, if you have a family of four and you make 150 grand a year. Right. Yeah. It's like super expensive here. Right. People don't know that. A lot of people don't realize just how bad yeah, it's it is. Crazy. Right. So up literally up until about a year ago. Um, you know, I just assume that, you know, if we were having, this is also the why I, you know, for those that give a shit or even care about this, but, uh, you know, I waited a really long time to have, have a kid because of this, because I wanted, I wanted to be in a place <clears throat> where, you know, you know, that Katrina didn't have to work if she didn't want to. That was really mm -hmm. important to me that we would have that option, but we really didn't have that option until the last couple of years. And, you know, when she, or we could have, but it would have been really tight just living off of my mm -hmm. income, you know, and we're, we're accustomed to a lifestyle that I think both her and I enjoy and like, and, uh, in order for us to keep that, we were assumed that she probably would have to work well in the last year, that's no longer a situation. So it wasn't really discussed that much because the reason for her wanting to work wasn't, wasn't ever like, oh, we need the money. It was always cause she likes to work. So it wasn't like, um, Hey, you know, you don't need to work or I don't want you to work. It's always been, she loves, she loves work. She likes what she's doing. She's very good at it. She's well respected for it. Uh, she continues to get raises every single year. They try and promote her up the chain. Like they're grooming her for an executive mm -hmm. position for a, a, a massive company. So, you know, that's uh, for her and she's competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she was a collegiate level athlete. So these things that she's, she's drawn to these things. So now here she has, her son, and now we're in this situation. There was very little communication around it. Like I've talked to you guys more, probably even on the show more about it than I have with her. Like there's been subtle discussions, like me letting her know that, hey, you know, we're a partner in a team. And that means that if you want to just take care of our son and you don't want to worry about work, I'll take care of that. Like you don't have to worry about that. But she's I think for a long time been telling herself that she wanted to work. Well, as these dates got closer and here we are, like I told you last time it was supposed to be two, three weeks ago, she was supposed yeah. to go back and she pushed it out. And now here she is again. And, and I think she's just now realizing like, God, he's so little still. Yeah, He's so like, and even me a little shocked. I'm like, damn, like I have this whole new appreciation for women that have children and then still go back to work because I'm like, holy fuck, that's got to be difficult. Crazy. Yeah, imagine being a single parent. Right on yeah. many on I'm many sure levels. Lots of anxiety. Right. You know she's experienced right now, oh, and I'm sure that you know who knows if that's carrying over into him. No, it's it's it's. It, I mean, and look, it's different from for couple to couple, but uh, I, can, I think I can say this pretty confidently. If you can have one person handle the home base, I don't care if it's the man or woman. And one person handled the the finances. I feel like divide and conquer uh, is, is a better strategy. And, and this is just with this is with a business too. I mean, imagine if all of us did everything all the time. Well, that was part of our problem when we first right. started. Yeah, it would never work, was, right? Yeah. It, so divide and conquer and trust. Trust is important. Like I trust that you're gonna handle and organize that end, and you're gonna trust that I'm gonna handle and organize this. Uh, you know, this this end. Um, now it's not an option for a lot of people, um, especially if you live in an expensive place. Well, like, I think like it's also here. really difficult too if you you have grown up to identify as uh, as someone who is independent and competitive and hardworking and uh, taking they're, care of yourself. They're still good traits. Oh, yeah. It's still they still work. They're yeah, still, but I, I, it's I think it's it's a trend. Look, at, here's the deal. It's a transition, no matter what. Because you, because here's the thing, and this is, and I've had this conversation with, uh, with family members of mine. It's not the same, no matter what. No matter what, you went from being two people right. to now being two parents with an, with another human that you're responsible for, that you love more than anything you've ever loved in your life. Everything's different now, yeah. so w doesn't matter. It's Nothing. a whole new identity you're creating. Yeah, it's everything's yeah. different. Yeah, that's but that's, that's really easy for us to just yeah. say that. But when somebody <laughs> yeah. has when somebody has gone thirty eight years of their life identifying as a as a person or thinking of themselves as this independent, strong woman, go getter, take care of yourself, not depend on somebody else, just because your whole world gets rocked and you have a child. 
it's really easy for us to sit here and just say, oh, now you switch, now you rely on your partner. And no, it's hard. I never, yeah. no, no, I'm yeah. not saying it's I mean, easy. It's, I'm saying it's a massive change, but the change has happened. You know what I'm saying? Right. And look at, even if you're the person that works, here's the deal. When you're the person, let's say you have a couple and one of them works and one of them stays home. The one that works, everything's changed too. Now you still go to work like you did before, but now it's, it's the stakes are different. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, I remember this, uh, you know, working for myself without having kids. Taking risks and making decisions, it's very different. Now when you have dependents, uh, all your decisions, cha yeah. there's yeah, a different, a whole chain way different weight, dude. Yeah. You know, like before you'd swing the bat, you don't give a shit, like fuck, risk it all, let's do this, you know? Then then, then you have kids that you got to take care of and you're like, oh, well, you know, if I if yeah. this doesn't work- I can't just take off on a whim, yeah. Totally, right. totally. It's to So it changes no matter what for everybody and it's hella not easy. No way, man. You yeah. got to- you got to respect the process no well, matter what. Justin, you, Courtney is like Katrina, I feel like. I mean, Very much so, yeah. And you you guys went through this, and she's she's been just barely not working for the first time in a long time in her life. What was that transition like for you guys? It was pretty similar in that she wanted to get right back to work, uh, especially with, with my oldest, because it was, it was that same thing. Like, very much prided herself on being the best nurse and, like, uh, had all this education and experience and was at the top, uh, you know, at her work. She was like the go-to whenever it came to like a problem. Like she was like training other ones, developing new nurses coming in. And so that was a huge part of our identity. And so quickly, and, and so I think that it's the right move in terms of letting them go through that and, and, and figure out that like, oh my God, there's so much more pull that she was experiencing while she was at work to be back with my oldest. It was just like, she was just, she, she felt, she felt like immediately like, Oh, I, I don't know if I can, can keep doing this at the same time, but we had to, again, that was back when like things were like the dual income thing was like massively necessary. Right. Uh, and then actually when we had, you know, our second kid, um, we made the financial sacrifice of like, we, we, we took a big hit. Uh, that that year and i i i spent like uh, a lot of time like working i worked a lot more jobs and side jobs and things to like kind of pull more weight but like the whole year she was off and then came back so she had like two months it, basically she was off and then had and then had to go back to work for our first kid then the second one we we extended it to a year yeah and uh i mean it, it hit us pretty hard financially but it was totally worth it so again i think it, i think it is it's it's smart to just let her go back and, and, you know, try and get in a rhythm, see if it's like something that she really does want to be there or if she's pulled back to be, you know, so, so I got a text before we even got on the, on the mics already. So the plan today is this, like her mom comes over on Monday. Like I take care of the baby first thing in the morning. Uh, her mom gets there at, uh, about seven 45, eight o'clock. I hand him off to her and then I get ready mm. to take off and come over here to the studio. <clears throat> and, her and I told her mom. I said, "Listen, I'm not far, so if you have any problems, call me. I'll come. I'll come home, and that way we don't have to bother Katrina. I'm mm -hmm. trying to give her all, like you're saying, all her, for her space to kind of go through this and figure it out herself. And so I tell her mom that before I leave, and she goes, "Oh, well, Katrina already texts me." I go, "Oh, really?" She goes, "She goes, yeah." She goes, "No, she's she's coming home early." I go, "Oh, really?" She goes, yeah, no, she said that uh, she's, she, does, she doesn't have enough to do there right now, so she's coming back. <laughs> so, yeah. I, so I already see it's happening, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I saw her this morning. I could just see the the emotional pull of like having to to leave him. Wow, you it's know? a real thing, man. Yeah, and it's it's funny because like his he's going right now, he, he has these, he's, he's, his lungs are still developing even, you know what I'm saying? Like he's not even fully developed. And so he gets like this raspy kind of breathing sometimes, like if like his the milk gets like flimmy in them. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, for me, it's no big deal. It's like, I, it's part of this. Right. And you know, she's like, God, he's all, he's flimmy this morning. And I don't know what's going on. I think I should stay. <laughs> she's it's going back and forth with that. And then her mom hears him and she's just like, Oh God, I hope he's going to be okay with me. I said, listen, I'm right down the street. You guys can all call me. I'll, I'll right. come back. But it's, it, it, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, I know she, what's nice about her job is that she only has to, come one day a week right now and so she only has to leave the the, the office or li go to the office one day a week which, and then she works from home after that yeah mm. well so, that makes a big difference right and, yeah no and we have choking now there too so she's assisting her and helping her out so she's got 
the help and the support to kind of ease her way in. But we'll see. I have a feeling that, you know, after a couple of weeks of her having to go in like that, I think things might change up. Mm-hmm. So, mm. yeah, it's, it, you know what? The other, the, here's the other thing. It's going to be hard no matter what. I mean, having, you know, having a child, a new baby, it's always hard. Yep. It's always a challenge, man. It doesn't matter. So that's why I just shout out to all the parents out there. You know it's what I mean? fucking I do a good way job. hard, dude. It's, hard, it's dude. way hard. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's, it's, it's why I don't sell it like you know, like a lot of those other parents. Oh, fuck, hey, you know what? I, that's it's what like, I'm gonna uh, say to all the parents. Fuck all care. y'all, bro. Telling people that shit, dude. Like, don't be telling. Uh, hey, me. Justin be, and I were honest to you. I, we were honest. Well, that's we, why. One, dude. That's why we're all good friends because yeah. you guys are honest like that. The fucking. You know what I think? I think fucking misery loves company. That's why the other motherfuckers are like exactly. Yeah, they they end up having kids at like 25. Five and they tell all their friends like, "Oh, it's the best thing in the world." Like, no, it's not, motherfucker. You're 25 and now your life is completely changed. Like, your life, you know what it is, revolves around your child. Everything. You know what it is? I think it's because saying that it's really hard is people are afraid to say that because it's almost like they don't feel grateful because it's both. But you can say that. I agree. I I feel totally comfortable saying it's the fucking hardest thing I've ever done. Don't fucking do it early in life. Right. I'm so glad I waited late. It's mm-hmm. a, it's. But fucking, you also it is the most rewarding because yes. it's so hard. Right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. That's, but that's uh, why though. That is a hundred percent. It feels easy. Be like whatever. Yeah, yeah. there's no reward. But the, uh, the people that do the fucking Instagram post and make it sound like it's oh, it's the most wonderful, easiest. Nah, get the fuck out of here so, with that. Get out of here that's with hilarious. that. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna change the subject. So <laughs> <laughs> stress and salad. Yeah, I know. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. Hey, so, you, kind of like you changed your uh, beard color over there. You like that? I know. Hey, guy. This you know young what? guy. Who hey, is this guy? Hey, guy. No, no, no. Okay, so, can we get a close-up? Uh-huh. Did you finally oh. listen to me? No, dude. I, so we had a, a costume party over the weekend. Oh, convenient. With, with all my... Convenient. with with my. I'm, well, you'll see. Weird. I'm keeping it, guys. <laughs> It'll, weird. No, I'm not yeah. going to do that. Yeah. I had uh, my cousins come over, and we all dressed up. Uh, you is know, that because like vampires don't have gray beards? No, man. I want to age. No, vampires are like dark. So I had dark eyeliner on. I did the whole like uh, I had like this gothic, like like long jacket on with the ruffles and things. You could double as a magician. I mean. <laughs> Everybody said was saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica yeah, had this Blaine. Jessica had this corset on, like this bustier corset thing, and she put on the black lipstick and the whole deal, and we had the fake fangs. It was oh, fucking I see rad, what you dude. Guys are doing. But I dyed everything uh, for it. And it's funny, dude. I wake up in the morning, I look like I'm I feel like I'm still in my costume. I look in the mirror. <laughs> This looks terrible. I love my grays, dude. You look good. I, don't, I mean, I didn't look bad, but I, I want. You like look good, although I like. I wanted to see your black beard, beard black beard, gray, hair. gray and hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I think. I think. Sorry, that, I don't match your fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Adam's, Adam's put a lot of thought in this. He, he's yeah. brought it up before. He's yeah, always yeah, trying to close me yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Watch out! You do I'm trying to get you to let me kind of take you know take care of you a little bit style wise and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, Viore's hooking you up so you look good. You look good the way you're dressed and stuff like that. No, no, but yeah, no. So it's gonna be like this until it grows out. So you know what's gonna happen? My hair's gonna get long. Then I'm gonna get a haircut. And it's gonna be so drastic, uh, yeah. you know, like whoosh, whoa, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Sal looks like he aged 15 out. years. Yeah, don't yeah, do any weird. videos or anything right yeah. now, dude. Yeah. I went, I went to a um, Halloween party too. So you went, you went with Jessica to a Halloween party. It was our house. It, it was our house. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we went to one, and it was like, yeah, it was a, it was a mom and dad that it, like, I guess their kid knows, you know, my oldest, and so it's one of those like from the school, like they just invited like all the parents, like oh, yeah. everybody in in the neighborhood. And so we're like, you know, we're not doing anything. The power is going to be out, you know, whatever. They, they told us all to bring flashlights and like all, all this stuff. And they had like a whole setup and it was kind of fun, but it was like, I didn't know anybody there. Right. So we're just there. Like I'm in like my stupid, like Johnny, uh, costume, <laughs> Your same costume, same costume. Bro, you've you were like, like five years in a row. <laughs> Cause I just, I like, I, I don't want to put any effort into it. You know what I mean? And so I'm in there and it's it's a new group of people, so they haven't seen me in it, right? So I justified it that way. And Courtney's like dressed as a witch. And uh so and my other kids are out, they're all Indiana Jones and mob yeah. mobster, whatever. But so they're running around, everything's crazy, and and I'm sitting there and so we're supposed to bring alcohol, and so we bring some trulies and I'm put it in this ice chest <laughs> and I'm kind of I'm putting them in and packing in all this stuff. This little girl comes by. And there's also like other drinks. Like there's supposed to be. This is the alcohol section, right? It's it's a green colored cooler. It's for only alcoholic beverages for adults. It says like adults on it, like real bold. And, then, and this, there's one right next to it, and it has like you know 
uh, mineral waters and the, everything else yeah. in there, right? She comes by, grabs a truly, looks at it. I'm like, oh wait, that's uh, that's for beelines. It takes off. Oh shit! Starts running. I was like, whoa! Like, like no, no, no. There's alcohol in it. And like, I'm like trying to track her down. She took off, dude. And, and like, I was like, did oh, you ever God, find like, her? Yeah, she gave it to to her parent. And uh, I was like, oh, woo. I thought for sure that was going to be on my watch. That's one of those parents that send their kids to go get alcohol for them. Oh, yeah, God. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? That gave me a panic give attack. Me a pack I'm of, like, yeah, that give me like, a pack of cigarettes. And <laughs> that was my she's grandma, like bro. Back, just down my grandma it. sending me for cigarettes when I was underage. Grandma, I can't go get cigarettes here. Take my ID. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to work. Yeah. That. That's not going to work. That's funny. Yeah. So, did you guys end up losing power? We did. So, at <sighs> how like long? Eight o'clock on Saturday, and then we still don't have it now. Oh, and so you, it, it, dude, it, everything is just more. It, it's like you don't want to complain or like it's like ah, it's not even a big deal because it's only like twenty four hours, whatever. But it just makes everything a pain in the ass. Of course, dude. of course oh, it does. It's of the course worst. It, that's dude. It, I, okay, there was a blackout in New York City. I don't remember the year. It was nineteen seventy something. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard about this, but there was a seventy two hour or something blackout that happened. But it was a massive part of the city. Crime exploded during that period of time. That's what I was worried about. Yeah, I, I thought had those thoughts going through my head. I'm telling you, dude, this is why. Like, uh, like you ever hear of like an EMP bomb? Do you know what those are? Mm -hmm. So this is where they like electric magnetic pulse, and they can wipe out all electronics. Yeah, a nuke <laughs> will do this, but you can actually make bombs that don't don't explode, but they'll shoot out this EMP uh, signal. That'll destroy all the circuits within a particular. Uh, yeah, they vicinity. can nuke the atmosphere, right? And they would do the same. Yeah, thing. so like, like they could take out like half of a country or all of a country's circuits, and to replace it would take months to fix it. Yeah. Do you know what would happen to a modern country if it lost all power for like a week? Just a week, well, dude. Remember. Just seeing everybody at Costco was like hysteria. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was like, dude, what is? This? Like somebody had told us there was 50 more generators. I was like, ah, oh, you know, like maybe I'll go look and see if there's like a generator still there, or whatever. There was like a mob forming around this one man. She's like, ah, he's like, here, <laughs> here, grab this. Like, I had to take a ticket to like get from the back because I had a new shipment coming in. I'm like, what are we even doing here? Let's get out of here. Like, I'll get it when it's not like, yeah, right then. PGE is fucking up. I saw an article that says that they may have been the ones to start the whatchamacallit fire that's going on right now. Is it the, is it called Kincaid? Is that what they're, Are is that you what? serious? Yeah. That is not good for that us. That PG&E may be uh, partially responsible for it. Ugh. Believe that. Believe oh, that. Oh, God. Yeah, dude. This is, you saw this that is picture. going to be an ongoing saga. You guys saw that picture I sent from you from Vallejo, right? I mean, yeah. That's, we, we went right through there when we were heading up to Tahoe. Wow. I yeah. mean, the winds were crazy, dude. I mean, we had lots of branches falling in our neighborhood and all over the place and all over the roads. Trees were falling. So it was crazy. legit. Like, Yeah. You also sent a picture of a... Now, I don't know if it was a picture angle or what, but it looks like a huge rat. <laughs> dude, the like king the of all rats. I got like Splinter. The, the leader. <laughs> Like it, okay, so how big was it? Show me with your hands. Uh, it was like this big. Oh yeah, yeah. It was oh, like a like a burrito like size, a, <laughs> you know, like a good good size burrito, uh, from Chipotle. But yeah, it okay. So we get back and and my my in laws came to watch uh, my, one of my my kids' soccer game, and so they came back to the house to see it. Like we just painted it and stuff and fixed a bunch of things, and so we're sitting there and then we look outside, and there's this dish that the dog eats out of that uh, has remnants of food on it. And so this, this bold ass rat just climbs up from under the deck and is just like hovering over near this, this, you know, dog bowl. And I'm like, and everybody sees it broad daylight. And I'm like, what the fuck ran into my room, got my uh, BB gun. And I'm just like, Oh, I hope it's still there. And of course it like skitters away. And then I just waited there for another like five minutes. I put one piece of dog food on there. It comes right back up. I go, oh, yeah, you're dead, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shot him right between the eyes and was like, Bruh! thank God I'm dead. Oh, that was a good feeling. Were you just cheering? Yeah, I was cheering. And, and of course, this is the same one that's been eating the pumpkins. Because now all the rest of the pumpkins not How even do you touched. Know? Yeah. Because oh. every morning one was like nibbled on. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Maybe they'll get. Hopefully, like they a get a pumpkin the mustache. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> just pumped up with pumpkin and dog food, and it was eating everything. Did I ever tell you guys about the the time we had rats at the 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 twenty four that I ran on in Santa Teresa? Did I ever tell you guys about this? No rats there, bro. So you know how they had that back supplement room? Yeah. 
Okay. So in the back, there are, you know, this is where we stored supplements. And we'd have big bags of whey protein powder, creatine, and other various supplements. This is kind of like our back stock or whatever. Right. Well, one of my boosters. one of my friend my front desk staff comes up and is like, I think we got a rat. So I go back there and there's holes in the whey protein and holes in the creatine. Yeah. So I jokingly I'm like, this rat's gonna be massive. <laughs> it's gonna be jacked. He's gonna, he was <laughs> the fucking week later, dude. The biggest, like, strongest looking oh, rat of calories I've there. ever seen in my life <laughs> runs through the back, through that back room, and I had a broom, so I'm like, whap, yeah, nothing. He was gone. I hit it hard. Yeah. Nothing disappeared, so we had to call it whatever. But I'm like, damn, this this rat's eating protein and creatine. <laughs> we're all gonna die. Oh, he's training. You know what I'm yeah, saying? he's, he's getting buff. Yeah, we're screwed. Anyway, I read an uh, interesting article. I thought I would bring up to you guys uh, some maybe some good news. I know Justin, you you've been challenged with the whole uh, power thing or whatever. And I right. read this, and right away I thought about you. I said, oh, Justin's. Oh uh, yeah. This could be me. good or bad news depending on how you're handling this. Oh okay. So a study came out that showed. That men who ejaculate 21 times a month Whoa. or more have lowered their chances of prostate cancer by a third. All right. So this, the odds. Yeah, so, this, <laughs> so this article is recommending that men uh, either have sex at least that often or masturbate in order to reduce. Because that's a big Thank God for that second, uh, you know, factor. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tra Otherwise, I'd be lower than the Try and lower my I'm prostate. I'm cancer. still struggling with that, bro. Yeah, it lowers your prostate cancer I'm risk. Still dude. struggling. I'm a, you're, you're trying to find a safe space. You got to huh? yeah. yeah. build a shed, dude. Is that what it is? Got to build a shed. Yeah. You. Ha I don't That's know. Why, why you have sheds. What do you struggle with? It's just weird to me. I still. I'm, I'm not. It's not still not normal for me to masturbate with Katrina in the house. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Did you did send you, her on errands? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then I got Max. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Which I, I definitely I can't yeah, get in the yeah, mood yeah. knowing it's my too having, early for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You can't be like, hey, here, read a book. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. dude. I don't have no. so I haven't figured this out yet. This is uh I'm still I'm not hitting that twenty one right now. Mm, yeah, I'm right. falling. I'm falling. I'm, my, my my cancer risk is much higher you, right you now. You got build up, dude. What do they call it DSP? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that deadly sperm buildup. I mean, we're wow. we're we're finally making time for ourselves, like when we can. Like, I mean, I told you that he's his he has a routine, so you know, at least I'm I'm getting it at least once or twice a week now, which I mean it was. Wait, so you oh, so one? Great. Hold on a second. Once or twice a week <clears throat> sex, mm -hmm. nothing in between. Nothing in between. <sighs> I would be. Well, you also I can't manage you guys myself. Act like that's crazy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, it's not well, that, hold on yeah. a second. Yeah. Once or twice a week of sex, but Justin, don't tell me you don't take care of the rest. Well, yeah. Okay, amazing. so do nothing. Imagine that. Are you, you are, you, once and are you masturbating that, that often right now? I mean, I'm, what is this like? A, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to learn here, bro. Tell What's me, I mean, are you? Is this a daily thing? I feel, I feel like you guys are. Give me something me. to look forward to. Uh, I mean, like, but be real with me. Don't bull, don't bullshit me. I know this guy's got problems. So I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear his fucking story. I want to hear yours. No, I mean, I make time. You know, make every time. day. It's just like I shower. You know, it's like it's it's uh, it's a it's a thing. It's a ritual. You like a, a daily a daily thing. Uh, I mean, sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. gotta love this yourself. Is, you gotta. Get self love. Yeah, love yourself, yeah, bro. I feel like you're being very vague right yeah. now. Well, it's, it's, like it's embarrassing. I mean, what am I going to say? Like, yeah, dude, five times a day, dude. <laughs> well, if it is, tell me. It's not. It's not that crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a big like exercise. There's an individual variance, Adam. It's when I'm, it's yeah. when I'm in the mood. The answer is it depends. It depends. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm going to change yeah. the subject again. Uh, Thank you, dude. You should be wearing blue light blocking glasses every single time you're on electronics. Every, every single time. Just, just. Always. Always. Now, you don't want to wear blue light blocking glasses that you wear at night that block all the blue light because you want to let some in because it keeps you alert, but you want some that at least protect you like 50% or whatever because I've been reading over the weekend. I was reading up like crazy. Blue light destroys photoreceptor cells in the eye, and when those are gone, they don't come back. Oh, so they're man. showing how it's really starting to speed up because now like how long – We've got at least one generation now that spends a lot of, that spent a lot of time on computers at work, right? Because 
if it, I, I would say, what would you say? Would you say it was our parents, or maybe maybe like a younger than our parents' generation, where people were? I would say our generation. Maybe our generation for sure. Yeah, right? I don't right, think right. it was our parents. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Right. My, my mom didn't get a. Yeah. Com- I mean, I didn't even get my first computer until I was twenty. Yeah. Well, so they're showing that Apple Two E was uh, the first for me. Dude, I problems resulting from exposure to blue light exploding. I was reading some statistics and it was crazy, and it's because blue light penetrates the eye all the way to the retina, and once again, it damages those cells. They don't come back. So my kids now, the rule is they have to wear them if they're going to go on their computer or any electronics at all. I think that's smart because yeah. I think, again, this is another one of those things that we we don't even know uh, what the long-term damage is because we haven't had a generation that's been- no studies that have- we, Even in computer screens, like I think the, the phone has to be even worse. Mm. Right? Why I've, would the phone be worse? Well, because you have You're to hold it closer, closer, oh, closer sure. and it, it's as bright. And I would think the con to me, I would think the contrast of it being dark outside and laying in bed and stuff like that with an even brighter phone. Mm-hmm. To me, that I seemed, feel more strain from it too. I do. Yeah. So do I. So I would think. Don't you feel like that's worse? I think it's got to be worse to be laying in bed or on your couch at nine o'clock at night staring at a small well, iPhone. Well, because screen. then yes, it's affecting your sleep as well. Right. But see this these stu- what I've been reading in these articles is we know about the sleep disrupting effects. So using um, you know, being on electronics when it's dark outside or right before bed reduces melatonin production, takes you longer to get to sleep, and it takes you and the sleep that you get is less is worse quality. We know that already. What this, what these articles are saying are daytime too, daytime. But again, you don't want to wear blue light blocking glasses that are blocking like ninety percent of the blue light during the day because some blue light's okay. Again, it keeps us alert. Uh, but you do want to wear something that uh, reduces the exposure, especially if you're on a elect- on a computer all day long. If you're like a lot of people are for work. No, that's, I mean, you guys have seen me. I probably wear mine the most out of all of us. I, I noticed a difference right away when I began wearing it consistently, and then I stopped wearing it for a while. Like, it actually, I could tell I my body adjusted because I would get headaches then, and then yeah. I'd go back. So now I just make it a habit. I, if I'm going to be working on my phone or working in front of the computer, it's just a, a, a habit. That you know what it on. reminds me of? Um, you know people who uh, work with loud equipment, like uh, people who work with like jackhammers or heavy machinery. Heavy machinery, and you know, throughout their twenties, thirties, forties, maybe fifties, they're okay. By the time they hit their maybe late fifties, sixties, hearing loss. And mm-hmm. I, I know I have people like this in my family because I have a lot of family members that work hard labor, and now they wear hear- hearing aids. And it's, and you ask them why, and they're like, "Well, I never wore hearing protection mm-hmm. through all those years, but it's a gradual decline." I bet we're going to see that with totally. people's eyes sure. because it's not going to happen to you in your 20s and 30s and maybe even your 40s. Maybe you'll start to notice in your 40s, yeah. but you don't want to be have you know macular degeneration, you know, when you're in your in your 60s and because that's again it's a loss of independence. Your eyes start getting fucked up and yeah. and uh, you know you can't do a lot of stuff for yourself anymore. It's interesting. I don't know if this is. Uh, <laughs> Doug put his on right away. Hey, 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 wait a minute. I'm looking at <laughs> no, a screen. It, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I was like talking to some of the other parents at the party and like our perception is that a lot of these kids are just glued to their phones and glued to their yeah. tablets and all these things. But actually there's a, there's quite a big movement going on where like most of these kids growing up now do not have phones and even going into high school now don't even use phones. That's right. Which is amazing. I yeah. was like, wow, I love to see the pendulum kind of coming back and being yeah. like, and really it is just like parents that give a shit and they're just like, no, like they, they don't need it. And then that, that, that sort of like has now created, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this, this movement with the kids. Well, that's, that's the, the alarmist in me that settles down when I go like, you yeah. know what, like we're pretty, you just manage it. Yeah. We're pretty smart humans. It, it will only go. So like enough people will go blind from fucking staring. The screen. <laughs> enough people, enough people will have issues that it'll word will get out. And then you'll start to see kind of come, come, come back the mm-hmm. other direction. That's mm-hmm. why I liked your, you know, analogy of it being like processed food. Yeah, because back in the day it was like, For, I mean, everybody was microwaving just whatever the fuck and didn't think twice about it. Yeah. And now you're seeing the generations now where parents are actually paying attention mm-hmm. uh, to, you know, cause like, here's a good example. It's not that common today, or f- at least far less common from my understanding where a kid goes trick or treating. Cause we got Halloween around the corner, right? Kids go trick or treating. When they come home, the parents will say, 
five pieces of candy, and then we'll save the rest for later. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, <laughs> nobody said that. No, he ate the whole pillowcase. I would come home with my pillowcase full of candy, and then we went. My, our parents were like, "All right, you know, go to your room, you know, enjoy." It. And then we would eat until we couldn't anymore. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I've heard a lot of kids now, it's competitive as to what like houses you can find that have the big king size of bars course. or like but yeah. that's all they care about. They don't care about quantity is like quality is becoming a thing. Oh, well, yeah. the big I mean I remember even there was one house that ser served the big king size candy bars. That guy was a, like he was like a hero. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Back in the day. The kids over here know that. If you go up to the uh, country club area, that's they all do. Do they really? Yeah, and it's funny because it's very uh keeping up with the Joneses too, uh -huh. so the yeah. neighbors find out. So like all the neighbors do it too. I want to yeah. be the cool house. Yeah, yeah. you don't want, you don't want to be like the cheap ass. Well, next door, you guys know that that whole uh service next door where everybody connects their local community. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So on there, they actually have these little uh, like candy corn and these like so if they're even participating in giving out candy you could see the houses that are participating oh, and then the ones that are rated yeah. is like oh they're giving the best candy. they also have uh if you put a blue pumpkin in front for autism you, no no i think the, there's a blue pumpkin shows that they're going to serve you allergen free candies no so the blue pumpkin means mm. uh if you the, I, if thought a, it, I thought there was one if, that also if meant a, allergies. If a kid, look at our boy larry he just posted about it if uh if if your kid is carrying a blue pumpkin then he he uh, has autism, and oh. and to be mindful of that because he could be older, and he could be still coming and trick or treating and look it's, like an older. Oh, that's, like, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, so this one says this is weird. It says the teal pumpkin. Teal, oh, teal. The, yeah. I'm talking about blue. There's a blue pumpkin that if you see. What's oh, the difference between teal and blue? Well, teal is well, like it's got more green in it. Yeah. Well, teal. Aren't they almost the same. No, teal is like. I mean, teal's light blue. It's almost like a uh, Facebook color. Oh, okay. blue, blue is more like. Uh, so that's what it was then. Yeah. So teal means allergy awareness. So if your food, if your kid has like food allergies or whatever, you you, you go to the house with the with the teal pumpkin. You know that they're going to serve. Uh, you know those. And then there was of course the houses that served uh, or that gave out uh, like pencils and erasers. That house got egg. Yeah, we're gonna egg that house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah La Larry posted on the blue. If if a kid has a blue pumpkin, I thought mm -hmm. that's what you're talking. Oh, about. <laughs> there you Doug go. brings up teal. <laughs> <laughs> you just got yeah. served. Oh, you know what? I wanted to bring up uh, Adam. I, oh, first off, we need to announce this hmm. brand new maps program. Oh, I started it. Brand new maps. Dun, maps. Dun, 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 power dun. lift. This is a maps power lifting program uh, that we co-wrote with uh, Ben Pollock, who's a champion yeah. power lifter. So this is the first maps program spe breaker. specifically for power lifters. And you did a workout already, right? So this is actually uh, being completely transparent with the audience. This is the first program since the original three. Uh, that after we wrote it, I'm gonna like follow it to a 100%, T like, right yeah. away. Yeah, I've never. And the and the truth to that is like you know obviously we've created all of these programs and so uh, you know there's bits and pieces I take of all of them and sometimes I'm in one phase of one and then I move out of the other and I know my body well and I know what it needs, but I have never uh, programmed myself uh, for like the big lifts and to get better at the squat bench mm -hmm. and deadlift. Mm -hmm. And I've never done that. So this to me is for sure extremely exciting to try and do that. Like mm -hmm. I did like a little bit of this type of programming, but it was more specific to deadlifting when you were yeah. uh, uh, kind of calling, calling me out and talking shit about deadlifting and I was trying to catch up to you. Mm -hmm. um, that's the most like programming I've ever personally done to chase a PR. Like I've just, I've been the anti PR guy sure, for sure. most of my, my career and uh, never even thought about doing a powerlifting meet or anything. And I have no plans to do a powerlifting meet, but I am interested and excited to follow a very well-written, badass powerlifting program mm -hmm. just to see what I can do with my own numbers. Now, right are now. you doing it to the letter? So it's got the priming to sessions, the post-priming? Everything. Everything is just written well, out. I mean, I just started it, right? So I'm on day two today. Mm -hmm. and It's four days a week. <clears throat> so, right? It's four mm -hmm. days a week in total. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So... Dude, that's exciting. Do you have goals for? Because I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm not going to start probably till next week. I think next week, because I wanted to finish out this week and, and just work on some mobility stuff before I go into it. It was perfect for me to start because I I just went through a, a week off, uh, not intentionally. I just busy, crazy schedule and a lot going on with us traveling, and uh, I had just I hadn't gotten to the gym for a week straight, which is the longest I've taken a break in quite some time. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. I haven't done anything. So because that's what's hard about switching programs. Like if you're in the middle of something or training. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wasn't. Uh, so I started. Um, and I do. I have I have like my personal goals. Like I set very low 
real I know I was sharing some of the numbers with you and you're like, Oh, you're gonna you should blast that out. And I'm like, Well, I sure hope I do. Um but so what where are you at now? Where would you estimate you are now with the three lifts and then what are your goals? Well, I, yes yes so it starts off on on bench, right? So I benched yesterday and it's your eight to twelve reps. So I was working with two hundred pounds. So I'm working with two hundred pounds, uh eight to twelve reps. I I didn't try a single PR, but if I had to guess where my bench is at, I could probably get out a single of 275 right now, okay. maybe, you know, probably around there. Definitely okay. not 315 right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to see my bench be somewhere between 315 and 350. Mm -hmm. um, would, would be up there with uh, some of the best numbers that I've ever put up on chest. Um, my deadlift right now, um, I'm working out with 405. Uh, I could probably squeeze out 450, I would say at least, uh, right now. I like my deadlift to be at least 500 to 550. Um, my squat, um, I'm working out with 315. I could probably squeeze out 370. Well, I already did a 375, so I could probably maybe hit 390 to 400 right now in squat. Um, I love to see my squat 420 uh, mm -hmm. or above. So I think I, I set modest numbers considering where I'm at right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel like you'll get those. I hope so. Yeah, but if I, I hit those, I mean, that'll that'll be a higher total than I even was when I was uh, geared up. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can hit those numbers, that's freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll be super super stoked about that. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped. I can't wait to to start next week. And I, I would if I got my if I got a, another 600 pound deadlift, that's it. I'd be super excited. Squats. I mean, anything for me over. 370 would be phenomenal. And then bench, if well, I could get... You just put like 350 on the bar and squat the other day, didn't you? Uh, what Did I just squat? Oh, I did. I did 345, didn't I? Mm -hmm. So you I guess it, 400 pounds. Yeah, I guess 400 pounds would be a good squat. Here's the problem with, with for me, is uh, I got to be careful with like injury mobility. I mean, I guess it's the problem for everybody. Yeah. I got to be careful with... Uh, so if, if I start to do this and I start to hurt... I'm gonna back out. Well, this yeah, is, I'm gonna be real conscious of because uh, like sitting a lot more and like my hips like like talking to me like I know if I'm gonna start like putting the pressure on that like it's gonna be touchy. Well, what I'm excited about and that's why I'm following this to a T is when I was chasing you, I wasn't uh, I wasn't even like uh, diligently tracking and programming for it. I was like kind of going after it, sure, knowing keeping some key principles. Uh, there as far as like volume of training and sure. frequency but by no means was i really truly programming mm -hmm. to do it I'm just taking my uh, learned knowledge over years of, of training and, and applying it to try and catch you mm -hmm. this is well programmed so i don't think you should run i mean that's one of the things that, that's so great about really good power lifting uh, programming is that you're not really hitting PR type numbers at all that no, much. No, so there shouldn't be a lot of risk at yeah. hurting yourself. No, it's or, smart. Yeah, I yeah. mean, well, no, now, and, and it's got the priming. It's got the yeah. priming included. So and the, the post, pre and, and the post constant practice. practice. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it is. It's more pra it's more practice and consistent with that, and focused around the core lifts, which for me and I am doing. I am making a little adjustment to it. Let me guess, calves. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> add some calves yeah. in there. I mean, I took a week off of calves and they disappeared, bro. So I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I mean, like the little Adams odd. They're already yeah, they're already terrible. So I've got to at least touch them up a little bit, or else I'm gonna be like you know <laughs> yeah. benching and squatting all this weight. But then like people are gonna be like, "How's he doing that on those pencils? That's crazy." Yeah. You know? So they're, I, I got to do stronger some, than they look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I'm doing a little calves yeah. in there. Too. No, I'm 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 excited to try it. I've never done a pure uh, powerlifting program. I've done I focused on strength. I like strength. I like lifting heavy, <laughs> but I've never followed because this is like legit. This is like based off of percentages and. It leads you all the way to your peak. So, because, you know, the way we wrote it with Ben was we wanted this for, to be for people who, you know, work out, who then, f f you know, first time want to start in a powerlifting, do a powerlifting competition. So yeah. it's like from where you're at now in 12 weeks, ready to compete. So at the end, you should be hitting your highest totals that you've ever hit before. Yeah, especially when you, if you're even thinking of competing, just having that all all these videos that he did like for oh. the the in person like he's he's talking to you as if you're about to like do your first competition like what to wear like you know all these things to look out for like how to prep like what kind of food to eat like like demystifies yeah. the whole process you, it's you, great. here's what i this is what excites me and i know there's a lot of demand for this because every single time uh people comment tell us to write a new program it's always a powerlifting one so we finally did it 
But what I'm excited for is for the people, especially female listeners, who are trying to take their try to trying to work on their body obsession or body image issues. Because one of the best things I ever did as a trainer, mm -hmm. uh, or one of the most effective things I ever did as a trainer for clients who had issues with body image, focus it, on strength. Yeah, is, is yeah. I take the, take it completely off of their body weight, how much you weigh, what your size is. And focus it entirely on performance, so it just shifts your focus. So you go from you know body obsession to just more about strength, and they would all get tremendous results because they never really gave themselves permission to do I that. I can't stress how right. important that is. In fact, I, I if for our population, the people that listen to this podcast, um, yeah, I'm sure we have some people interested in powerlifting and want to go that direction. But I, I highly, highly recommend it if. You're in a place where you know that you struggle with the scale, the weight, the mirror thing, and and constantly being obsessed with that. And and you know this, uh, this program is going to be incredible for those people because I agree that my uh, and it took me a while as a trainer to piece this together. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, same here. How do I how do I help these? You these just clients? move their focus, right? Yeah, and and it did it always did wonders. So mm -hmm. uh, I I think that's going to be one of the most valuable parts of this program because you don't you don't need to be I'm not doing a, a powerlifting meet. I have no desire to do that, but I am interested to focus just on now. At on the very control. end, are you going to do that and are you going to test your? Oh like, yeah, your I'll maxes? test my yeah yeah I'll test my max. That would be kind of fun, right? Yeah, no, I, I mean I, I I'm never done this, so I, I haven't max been day. I haven't been this excited about uh, any of our programs since the original ones that we wrote when we first got started. There was a lot of energy around the three of us getting together and mm -hmm. collaborating, and so I did love writing the first three programs. Um, now I've fallen more in love with the rest of the business and everything else we have to do, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely excited about this one. Yeah. Now, are you going to, because this, this was what I was thinking about too, was hitting these PRs. Are you going to follow like what it would be like at a power lift? Because a lot of people don't realize this, but when you're in a competition, they have very strict standards for the lifts. So like oh, with yeah. a bench press, you go you down. You hold it down there for you touch a your, long you, second. Yeah. You touch your, you touch your chest and it stays there for a second yeah. before you press it up that that'll take 15 to 20 pounds off your bench press yeah Kills of course momentum. with your of course with your squat you have to have a you know it's your, your break parallel um and then with your deadlift you can't drop the bar yeah. uh, and a lot of times people hit a pr with their deadlift just long enough to barely hold the bar and then they drop it type of deal so it's not it ain't it, it definitely ain't easy i lift like that already so it's not going to be something that i think is too i mean i already am the slow tempo kind of lifter when it comes to squatting and deadlifting and uh bench pressing mm -hmm. and i i definitely go f full range of motion on all those lifts so That'll that won't good. be that big of a oh dude i wanted to give a shout out to so you know how we did that episode where i talked about how um in the military people were using tampons Oh, yeah, to yeah. stop bullet yeah, yeah, and yeah, to help yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that's Great a real thing. Knowledge I got messages from people that said, "Yeah, that they used to. They've done that in the past. They don't do it anymore, but it was something that people did in the past because it actually issue tampons. Yeah. All it the actually soldiers. worked. Yeah. So um, I got a shout out from or, or uh, got reached out from one of our listeners, and he says that they use something called quick clot, um, it, but in the past that they used tampons, but they don't use them any anymore. He's coming out of Afghanistan. I want to give him a shout out. Task Force Fifty Two. These guys are special forces, Green Berets uh, yeah. out there in Afghanistan. Who are a bunch of badasses. Yeah, so shout out to those boys. I guess there's like a bunch of them that listen to the podcast. We got to make it awesome. out to a base, man. I would love to do that. Somebody invite us. I let's, would love go, to go love that. out to a base and do like a live Q&A or whatever and meet a bunch of freaking badass people. Yeah, I'm Hell down. Yeah. First question is from Laura Andrews, 1989. Do you have any advice for someone trying to put on muscle but is struggling with eating extra calories? If I eat much more than what I'm currently eating, it makes me feel sick. Yeah, th this is um, this is a good one. I because most of my life I've tried to put on muscle. I know exactly what this feels like, and it took me a long time to kind of work around it. So there are a couple things you can do to in to increase <clears throat> the amount of calories that you eat. Um, but before I get into that, um, in terms of you know, how you eat your food and whatnot, I do want to say this. Force feeding yourself too often, probably not good for you. Your, your, your body is sending you a signal that's saying um, that you're getting enough food. Um, now, unless you're ill or overtrained, like if you beat yourself up, you're overtrained, super fatigued, sometimes that'll cause you to not want to eat as well. But if you're otherwise healthy, um, you want to kind of listen to your body. And maybe what you want to do to start with is send a louder muscle building signal that then will amp up your appetite a little bit. So sometimes 
to get your appetite to increase, you got to change your programming. Your workout may be, you may be doing too much in your workout or you may not be working out in a way that's building muscle effectively. One of the mm -hmm. first signs of an effective resistance training workout is an in increased appetite. Absolutely. Right. So, you, you know, if you lift properly and you're starting to get stronger, you'll notice that your appetite starts to boost kind of naturally. Now, that being said, um, there are a couple things that you can do. Um, I would say ha increase the amount of hyper palatable right, the foods novelty. that you eat. Yes. Throw some novelty in there so that way you get that contrast to, that maybe, you know, that'll help in terms of like helping you feel like you couldn't eat more just because it, it is a different flavor. It is something that's like a new stimulus. Yeah, stay, stay away from foods that make you feel bloated. That's an appetite killer because I, I didn't re learn this until later, but I would stuff myself with certain foods and because I, I thought they were supposed to be good for muscle building and I'd get bloated and then forget it. It's like I couldn't eat uh, for the rest of the day. Right. So easily digestible Food, this is a huge one for being able to eat more calories. If your digestion starts to go off, it's easy to not eat food when your digestion is off. It's hard to eat food when your digestion is off. So I would say focus on that. And then the last one would be drink some calories. Um, this is probably the easiest uh, possible thing you could do. If you're not dairy intolerant, uh, a glass of milk with each meal. Uh, one glass of milk with each meal, boom, 300 calories mm -hmm. You know, right there. If you are dairy intolerant, you could try full fat coconut milk or protein powders uh, you know that you mix with the pro with the coconut milk and then drink that with a meal or in between meals that's the old school approach you know old school bodybuilders used to do that they would eat three big meals and then in between they'd have like a big you know shake that you're you know but again you have to digest it well because if you start to get bloated you're you're going to be totally screwed uh, a couple other little tips too um this is where I do see value in the the six meals a day or whatever where you're breaking it up Sometimes it's hard, uh, and I don't know where your caloric intake is at currently and where you're trying to get up to. Um, but I definitely know that for when I was pushing, you know, four or 5,000 plus calories a day, it was extremely hard to do that. And even like four or five meals, like this is, it required me to do six plus meals a day. And it's just easier. It's, e it's easier to put down a, you know, for me, a four or 500 calorie meal, maybe for you, it's, uh, you know, two, 300 calorie meal versus you trying to put down 700 calories in a single sitting. So that's one thing that helped me was uh, breaking the meals up in, in smaller, more frequent meals instead of uh, the, the big, large meals. And the, the difference as far as health wise and all that is we're splitting hairs on that. So I don't think it's a big deal uh, for you to do that. The other thing that helped me was eating uh, more more high glycemic carbohydrates early and lower in like saturated fats early on in my day and then allowing that later on in the evening. So I chose leaner meats uh, early on and and things that were lower in fat. And then I piled that on in the evening time. And by piled on, I just mean, you know, I, I chose to have the steak or the chicken thighs or... Uh, butter on whatever veggies or something that I'm eating. I did that later on in the evening when I when I was like my last meal or my last two meals. And earlier in the day, I kept things like oatmeal and rice and uh, fruit. They this all seemed to stimulate my appetite and keep me wanting the next you know small meal that was coming up in an hour or two. Uh, that really helped me push uh, the calories in. If I had a big heavy you know, bacon and egg type of breakfast, which I enjoy. And I eat that way now because I try, I'm trying to stay satiated. Uh, the problem with that is it would keep me uh, so satiated that I didn't want to eat for another three, four plus hours versus when I had like oatmeal, blueberries and whey protein, mm -hmm. uh, I'm hungry an hour later, I'm ready to eat again. So yeah. th those, those strategies help me. Yeah. And here's something else to consider when you, if you are splitting up your meals, I think people, th they think they have to have a balanced, what I mean by balanced is carbs, proteins, fats, meal each time they split their meals up. It doesn't have to be that way. Something that I would do, because I used to be able to do this. I could, if I was kind of full, I could still eat a bowl of carbs. So what I would do is I would breakfast, lunch, and dinner were my proteins, fats, and veggies. Meals in between were a bowl of rice or you know, a bowl of cereal or my carbs. Those were really easy. And then, and then because I'd go through them so quickly in terms of digestion or whatever, an hour or two later, I was ready for my protein and fat, you know, main meal. So your meals don't all have to look like, you know, I have my starches, I have my proteins, I have my fats. You can split them up however you want and eat them up, eat them throughout the whole day or whatever to get those extra calories in. But number one, like 
get your your body needs to uh, want to build muscle, and once it wants to build muscle, your appetite will naturally go up. Uh, the whole force feeding yourself thing, I get it sometimes, but if this is you all the time, you got to ask yourself why your body doesn't want to eat these the, these calories. What, you know what's going on? Is it your digestion? Is it your workout? Um, because for it's like it's like starving yourself all the time. It's the same, although it's on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's not good for you. Well, I was just going to bring up how how interesting that is to me too. Like you ever notice like it's it's so hard to cut extremely hard. It's so hard to like aggressively bulk. I mean, the, your body has these this natural yep calorie you know uh, range that it wants to be in, and anything left of it and anything right of it is so hard mm. but finding that like it's a, it's a big stretch it is it's a it's so when you're when you are pushing your limits like this and, and i think what you said at first sal is so important that that wasn't something that i i probably noticed until later on and, and really pieced that together how important it was to switch my programming up sometimes just that in itself i mean if you haven't trained certain lifts or you've been following the same similar type of routine and just completely throwing a curveball at the body, it does tend to stimulate the appetite. Next question is from Drs. Vermin. When you reach a point you stop gaining weight, how do you get over that point? Is it better to back off of your calorie intake or increase it even more? Okay, so kind of related to the first one, but I'll, the first question we did, but I'll tell you what, if you stop gaining weight... The first place I would look would be a workout. That would be the first place. Now, diet plays a huge role here. It, it, it certainly does. But the first thing I would look at is, is my workout as effective as it can be? Because at the end of the day, I remember when I first broke this down, gaining a pound of muscle a week, which is a ton, okay? If you gain a pound of muscle a week, you're either genetically gifted or on anabolic steroids or a complete beginner and you just start lifting weights. You can't expect... To gain four pounds of that muscle. That is not going to last. No. But let's just say you did. Let's say you were gaining a pound of lean muscle every single week. Okay, let's say this was you. That would require an extra, I think it was something like 15 grams of protein a day or something silly like that. Like it's nothing. And that's if you gained a tremendous amount of muscle, four pounds every single month. Um, your, your body doesn't need all these extra calories to gain lean body mass. It needs a signal to build that muscle first. Um, and I, I remember, you know, going through this process myself or I would be doing a workout for a long, 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 long time. Then I'd change my workout. My diet wouldn't change. I would change my workout though. It would be more effective and boom, you know, two pounds of lean body mass would, would come onto my body. So that's the first thing that I would say is, is look at your workout and look there first. If you're not getting stronger, you're not building muscle, um, because here's what happens. If the workout's not effective and you just keep bumping your calories, you know what's going to end up happening? You're just going to gain body fat. And you see this a lot. Uh, guys tend to fall for this where they're doing the bulk and they come in and they're like, oh man, you know, I, I was on this crazy bulk for like three months and I gained 25 pounds, you know, and then you do your body fat test. You're like, actually, you gained three pounds of lean body mass and the rest was body fat. And then when you try and shed that body fat, you end up losing the fat and all the the muscle that you gain, and you're back where Some, you were before. It's misleading because, yeah, you, a lot of times you are gaining that weight. You're feeling good. You might be getting stronger. You think that like the majority of it's muscle, but it is like half the time it's like uh, mostly fat at, at a certain point that you're just gaining. Sometimes it's a bit of a mind fuck too to be like constantly trying to gain weight, gain weight, gain weight. And something I used to do with uh, the competitors that I coached and myself. Uh, when I would get in a situation like this, I actually would throw in a, a single day fast on a day off. And uh, it sounds like it would be counter. Sounds counter yeah, it totally sounds counterintuitive to do this, right? Uh, but when you're constantly trying to chase the calories and you're stuffing and you feel like you're always overfeeding and you're just not getting enough, feel like you're not getting enough. Again, I, I feel like sometimes we're just we're flirting with that line of like, oh, the body just doesn't want any more. So one of the, my favorite things, and I don't know if half of that is maybe a psychological thing that we're dealing with too. Uh, it just and this just works. It works really well for all the competitive athletes that I had. It worked well for me when I was competing, um, and that is what I would do: is I would pick Saturday or Sunday or whatever day you normally have off from the gym, and I would run a twenty-four hour fast, and I would just fast for twenty-four hours, and then the next day when I started feeding and training again, I felt like my appetite would spike back up again. So. 
Uh, it does seem uh, very counterintuitive to do that, uh, but this is a strategy that's worked mm -hmm. really well for myself and, and people that I've coached and maybe something that you explore. Now, as far as workouts are concerned, I'll tell you this right here, um, and, and this isn't always 100% true, but it's a pretty consistently true um, statement. Try to get stronger. Um, strength oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes if you get stronger and stronger and stronger consistently – it's accompanied by more muscle, especially if you're beginner or intermediate. Now, when you get super advanced, oftentimes the strength gains you get come from better technique, better positioning, uh, you know, better CNS uh, signal. But if you're beginner intermediate and you're trying to gain weight, you're not getting stronger, change your workout out to try to get stronger. Focus on that. And you'll. In, I used to notice this. It was like a, if I gain like 15 to 20 pounds on a lift – um, then I would notice an accompanying, you know, one pound of lean body mass or something like that. I, I actually have it written down I did, uh, when I was a kid. I noticed this, like, when I go up 20 pounds on a lift, I gain like a pound uh, of muscle. Try to get stronger. If you're gaining weight and your strength isn't, go is, uh, isn't going up, but you're gaining weight on the scale, I hate to say this, but you're, you're getting fat. It's, it's likely, not always, <laughs> but it's likely that you're getting, getting body tubby. fat. Now, you can gain muscle without getting stronger. But that's uh, you know that's much more tricky, um, and you'll see that more often in, in advanced lifters. So try to get stronger. If you get stronger, um, oftentimes you'll you'll gain muscle. Well, they never said lean weight, so that's true. You know, they could be wanting to get big. Next question is from J Main Seven. A college professor told us that the eccentric part of the lift is the only important part of the lift because it tears the muscle. If someone only repeated the eccentric part of the lift, would they see major gains, or is it a myth? Yeah, what it's kind just of one variable. Yeah, what kind of a professor would say that yeah, it's the it's only important the only part? One that, yeah, it, it it is true that the lower lame workout. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> done. Everybody's yeah. like lifting like grandpas. Yeah, so if, so for those lifting who don't know what that that means, so there's 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 two there's three parts of a, of a lift. There's the concentric, that's the lifting. So if you think if you imagine me doing a curl. Yeah. The concentric is me curling the weight up. Then there's the isometric, which is where you hold it. And then eccentric is when you lower the weight. So as you're lowering a weight, the muscle is still contracting, but it's doing so in a way that allows you're it to- You're resisting more gravitational forces, typically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's doing it in a way where it's allowing the muscle to, to lengthen while contracting. That part of the lift is the most responsible for muscle growth, and this has been shown in studies. But used by itself, it quickly- leads to plateau and it quickly leads to overtraining because it is a very damaging part of the lift. Now the concentric part of the lift also tells the body to build muscle. And it also is what's definitely the one that contributes most to athletic performance. Mm -hmm. Now at Olympic lifters, okay, um, they do a lot of concentric only lifting. With barely any eccentric. Yeah. Now squats, I would say they do lots of, con you know, con they'll do some eccentric, although they lower the weight a lot faster than most lifters. <laughs> Olympic lifters are buffed as hell too, though. Mm -hmm. Now they're not as big as bodybuilders or power lifters, but there's your evidence right there that the concentric part builds muscle as well. Um, now there's some benefits to, to the part of the lift that doesn't cause lots of damage. You can do a lot of it. So I can increase the volume quite a bit if I'm doing concentric only. Eccentric, there's only so much. You'll, I don't know if you guys have you guys ever experienced uh, experimented with like forced negatives and yeah, oh, just yeah. doing all negative for how long though? I mean, I did it for a couple of weeks and that was plenty. For yeah, me. you're 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 done. Your yeah. your your uh, recovery's done. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend the professor a little bit just because sometimes this is uh, he may have been giving a really good message in my opinion and then they just got misconstrued or misunderstood. Uh, and that's because I've done many talks uh, with trainers where I'm stressing the eccentric part of the exercise because nobody else is. Nobody else is, yeah. and nobody in the gym is. If you were, if we were to walk in your average gym right now and look at 90% of the people lifting weights on the floor, a majority of those people are not maximizing the benefits that you get from the eccentric movement right. portion of the exercise. Uh, and that is slowing the negative down. So the negative or the resisting the weight, we tend to just let gravity do it and we just let it drop or fall and then we focus on the concentric part. So in in defense of him, it it is 
just as important. So it's not more important than the concentric part of the exercise. It's just as important. Well, and to add on to that, like in sports terms, so to decelerate is a massive part of preventing injuries in like any athletic pursuit. So uh, that that second portion of now I have to slow everything down at once rapidly uh, is usually where people get hurt. And so to be able to kind of break that down and focus on that and strengthen that process is valuable, but it's one part. So you have to consider all the parts. And so I just, Again, I, I I caution myself to just like highlight that specifically as like the answer. Uh, no, it's all of it. It's definitely not the answer. It's probably the most neglected part, though. Sure. Um, of an exercise uh, that I think a majority of people could learn from that or take this advice and go apply it to their training. I mean, and I've said this on the show before. I mean, if you've never done this before, I I dare you to have a workout where you just change your tempo a four two two where it's you know, four seconds on the negative, two in the isometric hold position, and then two on the concentric or the or the positive part of the exercise. Just try messing with that tempo. Don't change your workout. Do the same exercises you were planning on doing today, but just do that in itself and note watch how different you feel. Oh, totally. You're probably going to be a lot weaker. Be okay with that. But and you're probably going to get really sore because you're not used to that tempo. And that just highlights the benefits of really putting some more emphasis on the eccentric part of the lift that most people just aren't doing. Yeah, no, you make a good point. I think uh, people don't focus on the muscle they're working when they lower a weight. They don't focus on the mm -hmm. tempo. It's like Am I, if I'm if, when I'm pressing in a bench press, I'll tend to focus on the pecs. But when you lower, do you still focus on the pecs, or are you just trying to lower the weight? Right. Uh, focus on the muscle you're working as you lower uh, the bar, the dumbbell. Um, that's a great. That's absolutely helps build a lot of control too, mm -hmm. which is important. Next question is from Jay Rogers Fit. Imagine you're 18 again with the knowledge you have today. What does your training look like for your sports or competitions? Okay. So if mm. I'm 18 and I'm competing in judo or jujitsu, yeah. uh, well, I just got a message from someone today who said that they were you know, doing full body workouts three or four days a week plus jujitsu four days a week, and he can't figure out why his strength isn't improving or whatever. He's doing too much. Um, you know, in my opinion, this is in my experience, training myself, but also training other people who've uh, competed in the in the grappling uh, martial arts like judo, jujitsu, and wrestling. Um, if you're training pretty consistently and competitively, you're probably doing at least three or four days a week, maybe five days a week of your sport. So if you're doing three to five days a week of jujitsu training, one to two days a week of resistance training is about it. Um, you're going to get the strength benefits. Any more than that, and it becomes uh, too much. Um, and you, you do. Here's the thing with sports: you want to spend most of your time training by training in that sport. Nothing is going to give you more carryover to your sport <laughs> mm -hmm. than actually training um, in that sport. Now, different sports allow for maybe more uh, greater ability to lift or whatever, mm -hmm. you, know, and, you know, more frequently. But for for like jujitsu, judo, wrestling, you're doing one or two days a week is ideal. Full body, full body routine was what I would do. Yeah, if, I, if I'm if i to go back and kind of train myself for football, uh, there's definitely a few things that would have changed, especially like the maxing out part of it where we're always trying to test. We overdid it. We overdid it constantly trying to test ourselves and see – you know, our one rep max where that lied, like uh, basically almost every two weeks we're, we're testing out these, these maxing out. And that's something I would have definitely spread out. Like if, if not even not do it at all and just, it just kept going with, uh, you know, a lower or, or a higher rep count, I should say with, with lower, with lower intensity. Uh, but also we didn't do a very good job of adding in all those movements and, and skill and mobility practices in between these, you know, heavy lifting days. And we, we stacked them too close together. And so that was something that if I would have loved to go back and really like simultaneously worked on my skill and movement as I'm growing, as I'm getting stronger. Uh, so that way it wasn't such a stark contrast when then I go to apply it on the field that took a good like month or so for me to just like, get used to this body that I've been building in yeah. the off season. And the, and the problem when you're 18 is this, it's a de definitely lack of experience, but here's a big problem. You, you tend to progress in spite of your shitty workout programming because you're 18. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like I'm getting strong. Oh. It's working. Actually, no. You're you're because of your age and your testosterone levels are through the roof, and you just don't have almost tons. anything works. Yeah, like you you're, you're going to progress some just because you're doing something. But man, you know, you step back in time and have like good workout programming. Mm-hmm. Holy cow! I mean, progress. I, I, yeah. For I, hindsight, for me, uh, it would be. <laughs> It would be pretty easy because mine was so horrific. At that age. Anything would have been better. Yeah, I, literally anything would have been better. I think I believe w- when basketball season was around and we were or training specifically for because when I first started lifting, it was around seventeen. It was more specific to you know getting nice biceps for girls uh, than it had anything to do with sports performance. But I still did some things like around uh, basketball season. We were doing. Uh, we had um, uh, our fifth period was. Uh, weight training so we could go in there and we could lift weights and when we were lifting weights we were thinking about basketball I guess during that time and the the extent of my basketball training was uh calf raises and strength shoes that was <laughs> yeah. that was the extent of I remember those so shoes. as as you can imagine uh if I just squatted I probably would and I'll tell you I'll never forget um finally stopping playing basketball which was in my uh you know probably early 20s to mid 20s and I began squatting back then, and I'll never forget uh, going on the court. So I didn't dunk a basketball until far after I stopped playing basketball. So I stopped playing basketball uh, consistently in my mid twenties, and then I began weightlifting and caring about building my physique. I put on like twenty pounds over the course of like five years, and ended up getting on the basketball court just for shits and giggles to see what I could do. And I remember dunking the ball and like surprising myself going, holy shit, mm-hmm. like where did this come from? And where it came from was I'd never really focused on building my leg strength. And just from that, all of a sudden now I was dunking a basketball. Now, I wasn't doing a lot of the agility training and all the other uh, ways that I'd probably be training now. I mean, if I was a kid now, this is the beauty of all of you young guys right now is I would be following Paul Fabritz and Corey Schlesinger. Right. I mean, those two guys, the content Max that they're- Max Schmarzo, those the, guys. Yeah, and Max, right? Yeah, Max, uh, Max, Corey, Paul, all three of which have been on our show, all three good friends of ours. Um, and boy, when you talk about uh, the performance training that they're putting out specifically for basketball, uh, but in general too for all athletes, but for basketball especially, is fucking fire. Mm. I mean, I wish I had access uh, just to their stuff when I was that age- Sometimes I, I get in this mood where I think I'm going to actually follow one of their programming or mm-hmm. try and like work on my basketball skills, mm-hmm. and I may I may do that just for shits and giggles one day. But the, I would follow those guys. I mean, we have access now uh, with the internet that we didn't we didn't have when I was a kid. I know Joe we, DeFranco is my guy, and yeah. thank God I found him yeah. uh, for football. But like, there wasn't any like. Uh, any other coaches I can think of that were like putting it together in such a you know profound way, where it's like, oh, this is simple. I'm applying. It's working. Uh, I didn't have access to that. Well, and, we, even, we, and, and even then, you had to buy like video cassettes buy, that were yeah. shipped to your house. Yeah, exactly. And shit, where I mean, you just get on to uh, Corey's, Max, or Paul's. Uh, Instagram pages and like just spend a day on there and you'll get yeah. DeFranco's got a great Instagram for that. He shows he's, a lot. He's of, awesome. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good. Stuff. I'll tell you. He, here's something you want to keep in keep in mind as well. At 18, um, strength tr- general strength training will give you a lot right of general of, carryover of, of carryover. As you become more advanced, then the resistance training becomes more specific to your sport. But initially, when you first start lifting, yep, you know, dude, that's such a good point. That's general I'm, strength. This that's is it. how this is how we design mass performance. Yes, was with the the kind of the eighteen year old you know person who wants to get uh, in athletic shape, or even somebody who's in advanced age and wants to get in athletic shape too. But the kind of the foundation you should lay before you even get into very specific training. Yeah, because you're not going to benefit much from doing specific resistance training to your sport um, until you have general strength. So right. Get strong at deadlifting. Get strong at squatting. Get strong at strength. overhead pressing, bench oh. pressing, rows, like the traditional lifts. Your best bet, no joke, better than any other specific program will be get strong at those lifts and do it, you know, once or twice a week, you know, with all your other training that you're doing. If you're not doing much school training, you could do, you could do more of that. Right. And then watch what happens. As you get advanced, then you start to do the more specific, like, okay, this is good for basketball or this is good for baseball or whatever. But if you're if you're not lifting and you're young, um, and you want to get lifted, don't don't get don't you want to start lifting? Don't get into the crazy specifics. Get the general strength first. You want to get well, lifted, bro? You can be. I mean, <laughs> there's there's some 
there's some general truths though that that's incorporated in maps performance that's different than like maps and a bulk that I would recommend though. Like I, there's a lot more unilateral training. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. And that to me, like a uh, and and uh, multi-planar uh, movements Definitely. that I, I think that that is uh, it's not like just standard squatting or deadlifting, which I agree with Sal in that case. But there's some huge benefits for athletes. It's the big rocks. Is yeah. You're going in these blocks of like, okay, I'm maximizing my strength, like my overall strength, which is what Sal's talking about. That's super important. That's our first phase. It's like everything's devoted to that. Now let's see how that goes in multiple directions because that's applicable in the field. Right. Totally. And, yeah. Totally. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They cost nothing. We got a bunch of fitness guides there on exercises and workouts and fat loss and muscle building. Make sure you go check them out. That's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.